Everything they do, they're basically shooting their own foot. So yes, they are pretty desperate. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博然。The CIA's spy network in China was largely wiped out over the past few years, leaving Washington frustrated with the lack of intelligence from inside Beijing's top leadership. This has forced the spy agency to report to desperation, taking their mask off and literally recruiting for spies on social media. This week, the CIA made hilariously blatant posts on Western social media networks in Chinese, complete with instruction videos on how to contact them securely and share state secrets. So, what's the goal? How are Chinese netizens reacting? And what does this say about U.S. decline? Today, I'll ask my special guest, Carl Jia. This is Reports on China. I'm Andy Boham in Shanghai. Let's get reporting. Over the past few years, China has basically wiped out networks of CIA spies, leaving the leadership in Washington frustrated with their complete lack of intelligence coming from China's top leadership. This has clearly led to desperation, with the spy network taking the unprecedented move of literally calling for spies online, with instructions on how dissidents can contact them securely and anonymously. The posts, which appeared all across Western social media, including Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Telegram, and LinkedIn, should finally be proof for the naysayers that Washington really does aim to infiltrate foreign governments and meddle in the affairs of other countries for their own benefit. Ironic, considering the total hysteria whipped up in the U.S. media at the mere thought of China or Russia or some other country doing the same thing. And the Western media has the CIA's back, reporting on the agency's drive for new recruits without even the slightest criticism. The BBC ran with the headline: "CIA seeks informants in North Korea, Iran, and China," and wrote, "The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency has launched a new drive to recruit informants in China, Iran, and North Korea." I would have thought a BBC journalist might have asked questions like. Why does the U.S. want to interfere in the affairs of sovereign states? What are the ramifications? Why do U.S. media and politicians constantly accuse other states of meddling in American affairs, while at the same time allowing the CIA to openly and blatantly admit they are doing or want to be doing that exact same thing in China? Alas, I shouldn't expect too much from Western propaganda outlets. Bloomberg ran a similar article with the headline. CIA boosts China recruiting effort to exploit discontent with Xi, and a similar zero percent attempt at journalism. They even featured an interview with CIA Deputy Director David Cohen, who said, "There are plenty of people who have access to information and who are disaffected from the Xi regime in China. You've got people inside who see what's happening, and for lots of different motivations, fundamentally do not like the direction that Xi is taking the country." And understand that there's a path to helping their own country by working with us. Well, very interesting. Well, now to get a bit more insight, I want to bring in today's special guest, Carl Jia. Carl, welcome back to Reports on China. First up, because I know you're quite clued up on the CIA's exploits around the world.、Um, is this the first time that you've seen the CIA so openly post recruitment calls on social media? Well, I. I think it might be the first time. I, I mean, like CIA is just trying to catch up with the times, right? I mean,、uh, all the young folks、mm-hmm. are on on social media nowadays, so you know, of course, CIA got to branch out. They they're trying to adapt to the times.、Uh, they got to do what they have to do to、uh, keep the recruitment up. Mm. Uh, you'll remember、um, just a few years ago how the Western media basically openly mocked China for educating its citizens on foreign espionage and how to spot it.、Um, just last year, Bloomberg ran with a piece titled "Xi's Security Obsession Turns Ordinary Citizens into Spy Hunters," where they basically、uh, tried to make CIA spying in China out as some kind of conspiracy theory and painted Beijing as quite fanatical and paranoid.、Uh, I'll just read a small part of that. It says, as students flooded back into Beijing's top universities in early September, a propaganda blitz around campuses signaled an ominous addition to their syllabus—a crash course on how to catch spies. So, Carl, it seems to have worked, don't you think? 
I mean, there's American idiom that says just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. <laughs> but <laughs> when it comes to CIA, you, you can never get too paranoid. The, I mean, the hmm. we, we U.S. Congress just approved like what 1.6 billion dollars to produce anti-China propaganda. Who, who knows hmm. how many billions are went into funding of CIA? Because we nev- never know. A lot of the CIA funding is off the books. You know, this is why they're involving in drug trade and so forth. So all the money can be can be traced. So have CIA networks been wiped out in China? Like, are they quite desperate? Well, that was a report, uh, was widely reported in mainstream media, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, as uh, I think they found 2012, that China has mm-hmm. wiped out CIA network in, inside China. And, and this is why maybe we're getting a lot of angry uh, reportage coming from this Western mainstream media about China's crackdown and, and how China is supposedly being paranoid. Uh, mm. I think the, the, there's a the, the problem, I think, is stems the general ignorance about China, in, especially inside the United States. Many people just don't have not a lot of knowledge about China. At the same time, now the Chinese government, I mean, the American government is pushing to so-called decouple from China. That means less mm. do, let, less people to people exchange, less people going to China to study. And the U.S. State Department is putting China on what the level three, they had a level three travel warning to China. It's warning the citizen to, to, to stay away from China. So now is this very trickle of information. Uh, I mean, U.S. government itself is throttled is, is uh, choking off any channels of getting information from China itself that it's not really, it's like everything they do, they're basically shooting their own foot. So yes, they are pretty desperate. <laughs> mm. Hey, I find it quite interesting how the CIA speaks of this uh, so-called growing discontent in China when time and time again, foreign surveys show that Chinese citizens are much more satisfied with their government than any Western nation. So according to Statista last year, 85% of Chinese said they trust their government. And when we compare that with uh, Western nations in the same survey, the picture is totally different. Only half of Australians trust their government, uh, and that number drops to 40% for Americans and a shameful 30% in the UK. So if they want to fix discontent, shouldn't they be looking to fix their own countries first? Well, first of all, you know, I think it's widely known in the West that the, their government and their elite is not to be trusted, not to be relied upon. Uh, but the, the same people will cast doubts on this survey number coming up, China. Oh, that's all fake data. You know, that's all Chinese propaganda. So I, I say, look at d- different surveys. Look at the surveys on people's optimism toward future. You will see like the level of optimism Chinese people have about their future in the next 5, 10, 20 years just blow a- anything of that's coming out of the West out of the water. I mean, there's actually a general pessimism in, in a lot of the Western society today, uh, especially the, from the youth, about their own future. Whereas the Chinese people are pretty confident their life is, getting, is being improved year after year. Uh, now, to go to your, 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 your question about shouldn't they focus more on their own society and the, the, their own government and media losing credibility. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen because what we're seeing is as the West, go, especially United States, goes into decline and when all the social problems start bubbling up, what they try to do is to distract people, to shift the blame and shift the tension. And the way they do that is to blame China. And, and a lot of you're, you're seeing a lot of copian and hopian coming out of the West. <laughs> what they're trying to trying to that what they're trying to do is say, you think the United States is bad. No, China have it worse. Mm. You should be glad you're living in U.S., not China. So we're going to see likely to see more and more anti-China propaganda because of that. That, that also justifies the one point six billion dollars that Congress has allotted to fund anti-China propaganda. It's it's all part of this. Uh, uh, a side to convince American public, you know what, you may have it bad, you know you have it bad, but the Chinese, they have it much worse. You should be glad mm. you're not in China. 
And speaking of that uh, propaganda, at least the CIA's call for spies here, many in the West are saying that Chinese people won't have the chance to see their open call for intel uh, since uh, most Western media here, Western social media here is blocked. Um, those people clearly don't have much of an understanding of Chinese netizens who are definitely discussing the CIA call and openly mocking it on Chinese social media. So I just want to read quickly uh, some of those uh, comments I found on Weibo. One user said, just asking, is there any money involved? If yes, I can reveal my national level intelligence forecast and analysis. The Chinese men's football team is about to lose. Another added, uh, is US 1.6 billion enough? Obviously making fun of the uh, US budget that you mentioned to spread anti-China propaganda worldwide. And another noted, uh, actually, this is a good sign. It shows that the CIA's previous intelligence lines have been exhausted. Now they are nearing destruction. So, Carl, I was wondering, uh, what kind of responses have you seen online? Well, well I see a lot of uh, amusement. I mean, a lot of the Chinese netizens find it funny that CIA has resorted to, like, basically open source recruitment on the Internet. And, and it, it does show their, their desperation. And, the, and I mean, we, we, we all know. Well, I mean, you especially you are involved in the in the media space. There's a lot of um, there is a lot of ignorance about China, and and a lot of the ignorance is brought on by di as direct consequences of action of the U.S. government, for example. And 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 in the long term, this this ignorance is actually not helping even organizations like CIA because they just. Not going to find talented people or or people who are who are knowledgeable to work for them anymore because uh, you know this is uh, th th they have a dumbing down of society here in the U.S. and you, it's it's hard to find good help. Okay, la last question today, Carl, and it's quite a big one. Uh, do you think the CIA's ultimate goal with this uh, recruitment is regime change in China? Oh, that has always been the goal of CIA since 1949, since the founding of the People's Republic. Um, that you know, right now they are more upfront about it. They, you know, we have U.S. politicians, especially in the Congress, who openly says that you, the goal of United States should be regime change in China. We heard that from former uh, Trump National Security Advisor. Um, uh, 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 Matt, Matt Pottinger, for example, and and we heard similar uh, talks from uh, Kurt Campbell, who is the so-called Asia Czar of Biden administration. I mean, I mean, right now there is almost a bipartisan consensus in the United States that the only way they're going to win the U.S.-China competition is is regime change in China. You know, they, they anything. Anything to stop China's progress, so you know, color revolution, regime change, but it's not going to work, you know, uh, because they have so few people in U.S. that truly understand China in the first place, and many of them don't even understand the the, the predicament that U.S. is in, you know, like Sun's the art the art of war says, you know, know yourself, know your enemy, you will emerge. Hun vic victorious hundred times out of hundred battles, but the, the problem with United States is that they neither know themselves nor their adversaries. So we're in the situation we're today. Mm. Interesting, Kao Jia, host of the Silk and Steel podcast. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. And on that note, that will be it for today, you guys. But as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Were you surprised that the CIA is getting so desperate? Do you think their ads will bring in any useful intel? Let me know down below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help the channel. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.